In our Sunrise Smart Start, another ho house struck by gunfire in Rochester. The police responding to Michigan Street around 1045 last night for that report of gunshots into a house. There were seven people inside, including five children. No one was injured. No suspects are in custody. The investigation is ongoing. A 40-year-old man was shot last night in Rochester and dropped off at Strong Memorial Hospital with at least one wound to the lower body. This was around 8 p.m. When police arrived at the hospital, they learned that that man had been shot on North Clinton Avenue. The Rochester Fire Department responding to a home on Welda Street last night. Crews arriving just before 11 for that working fire. They say the house had significant damage to the first floor. The good news here, no injuries. And a teenager robbed at gunpoint overnight. Rochester police say a 17-year-old walking through a parking lot was robbed at gunpoint of his personal property on West Main Street. This happened around 2 a.m. The teenager was not injured. No suspects are in custody. An investigation is currently ongoing. Well, the mother of a man found dead inside a tractor trailer on 590 last week spoke with News 8 to tell us about her son and the questions she's now asking. Police tell us they still do not know how 37-year-old Jeffrey Shorter of Irondequoit died. Susan Sackett tells us her son had taken a two-week vacation to Florida, had come back, and was on his way to pick up a trainee for work. She says his truck was on the side of the road for 24 hours before police stopped to check. Somehow, some way, Jeff was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Somebody, he pulled over the, for the cab for some reason or another because with the window down, because something was happening to him. The window was rolled all the way down, like something was happening with Jeff because it was freezing cold at night. Well, Sackett says she still texts Jeffrey every night to wish him good night. His funeral is scheduled for next week. Attendance is full for a SUNY Brockport event drawing plenty of controversy. Coming up later this evening, a man who spent decades in prison for killing two New York City police officers will speak with students there. Ericetta Cost in studio with more on this. Ericetta, good morning. Good morning, Will Jalil Muntakim, formerly known as Anthony Bottom, was invited to speak by a faculty member. He spent 50 years in prison for this crime before being released on parole in 2020. Not too long ago, the school switched the event to be just virtual after a backlash in the community. Registration opened for those with school email addresses first, but before opening to the public. Yesterday evening, the space was already full. On the school's website, they list an FAQ section about organization and more background on Mutakim. Since the news of the event, we've heard from the wife of one of those fallen officers, as well as some local politicians. Whenever things like this happen, it's like taking a Band-Aid off a wound and you open it up again. Do you think that they would have for a minute this guy being a speaker if he shot up a post office where he worked and killed two people? Of course not. I'll be speaking to Diane, the wife you just heard later this morning. We'll also be sure to check in with students throughout the day for their take as well. In the studio, Eric had a cost, News 8. Ericetta, thank you. Some expressing support for this event, including Citizen Action for New York, saying in a statement, once someone has done their time, they should have a clean slate as they move forward and are integrated in society. The event is set to begin at 6.30 tonight. Well, new this morning, Rochester police looking for a teenager believed to be suicidal and in need of medical attention. 17-year-old Selena Cansdell, pictured here, was last seen on Ellicott Street in Rochester around 1.30 this morning. She is 5'4", about 100 pounds, with blonde hair and brown eyes. She was last seen wearing a jacket and dark jeans. If you have any information, please call 911. Let's hope they find her soon. Um, James, a nice day to get out, take a walk, mm -hmm. rollerblade. Yes. yes. So, All of the above. All of the above. Yes, yeah, certainly. And uh, why not start off this morning? It's a pretty comfortable, I say 40s here, but really it's upper 40s. We're near 50 in many spots. It's a warm start, mostly cloudy. Won't see a ton of sun today, but still, it uh, should be a nice finish to the day. We'll have numbers climbing into the lower 60s 
before the rain moves in, which likely happens, I'd say, around 8, 9 p.m. Tonight is when the rain showers push through. We'll have the rest of the eight-day forecast and a look at the bus stop at the end of the show. Mark? All right, uh, James, uh, thank you. Uh, checking the roads again with our sunrise traffic. Just into our newsroom, an accident in Rochester on Emerson Street at Norman Street. So avoid that area. Another in Pittsburgh at this hour, Menden Road at Thornell Road. And again, uh, there is an accident on the throughway as well between exits 46 and 45 in the eastbound lane. Well, Senate Republicans in Washington blocking a $10 billion COVID compromise. Jesse Tenor has an update from D.C. on their decision. Frankly, together, they don't make sense. Senate Republicans argue they can't support funding more efforts to combat COVID-19 while lifting pandemic immigration restrictions. It's clearly a big issue with our members. Missouri Senator Roy Blunt and the rest of his GOP colleagues blocked Democrats' attempt to begin debate on a $10 billion COVID compromise over a Trump-era policy that allows authorities to immediately expel asylum seekers and migrants for public health reasons. I think there'll have to be an amendment on Title 42 in order to move the bill. It at least 10 Republicans in the 50-50 split Senate would have to support the additional COVID funds. While some Democrats indicated they may be on board with tying Title 42 to the bill, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer shot down the idea. This is a bipartisan agreement that does a whole lot of important good for the American people. Vaccines, testing, therapeutics. It should not be held hostage for an extraneous issue. Title 42 has been harder to justify as other pandemic restrictions have eased. The CDC announced earlier this month that it would lift the ban in May. Jeff Zients, the head of the White House COVID-19 team, deferred to the agency. This should not be included on any funding bill. Administration officials have warned the government can no longer fund testing and treatments for people without insurance, and money is also running out for boosters and vaccines focused on specific variants. In Washington, I'm Jesse Tenor. Jesse, thank you. All 50 Republicans opposed the move, leaving Democrats 13 votes short of the 60 they needed. In national news this morning, a second suspect arrested in connection to Sunday's mass shooting in Sacramento, California, leaving six dead and a dozen injured. 27-year-old Smiley Martin is the brother of Dondre Martin, who was the first suspect arrested. Smiley was seen on Facebook Live with a handgun hours before the shooting occurred. Authorities are trying to determine whether the weapon seen in the video was used in that shooting. And reports are indicating that the Biden administration is expected to announce another extension to the pause on student loan debt past the current May 1st expiration date. We're told this announcement could come today, and it's believed the pause is expected to last through August 31st. I want to show you this. More severe weather hitting the southeast yesterday, killing at least two people there and causing, as you can see, some serious damage. In this video, the aftermath in Georgia, more than 50,000 homes were without power from Texas all the way to South Carolina. Severe storms are expected to continue in that region today. All right, uh, well, speaking of the South, uh, here's what some folks will be talking about at the water cooler this morning. We're going to Augusta, Georgia. Tiger Woods confirming he plans to play in the Masters this week. This after that car crash over a year ago that jeopardized his career. Woods last played in the Masters in 2019. He will tee off tomorrow at 10.34 a.m. in the first round, answering if he thinks he can win. In custom, customary fashion, Woods said uh, two words, I do. Mm. A lot of confidence see. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people were saying that he was never going to be able to golf again. Mm -hmm. For sure. Let alone play in one of the toughest tournaments uh, in golf. So, we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. A lot, of, a lot of eyeballs on it, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, certainly. And you know what? Uh, this weekend, actually, may be a decent weekend to watch golf mm. uh, because the weather not going to line up necessarily that great. Uh, let's enjoy today. Bus stop forecast. It's comfortable. Uh, we're in the upper 40s. Uh, we'll finish in the 60s for our return home. Uh, mostly cloudy. Rain showers happen tonight. And then throughout Thursday, it's a soaker of a day there. Uh, rain showers carry into Friday. And then there's that weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, certainly cooler than average. We'll have overnight lows in the 30s, highs in the 40s to 50. So we'll watch golf Saturday, Sunday, and then we'll play golf next week. Ooh, uh, mm, temperatures warming mm -hmm. as we get into next week. That Good sounds plan. like a plan. Mm -hmm. Yes.
All right, James, thank you. And thank you so much for watching News 8 at Sunrise. Our next update coming up in 30 minutes. CBS Mornings is up next. Have a great day.